there's 100% certainty of impact. Can we just call it a potentially significant event? The message of Don't Look Up is encapsulated in the final line uttered by Leonardo DiCaprio's doomed scientist Dr. Mindy moments before human life on Earth is extinguished by a deadly comet. We really did have everything, didn't we? The story about a society that doesn't bother to save itself from impending doom is an allegory for climate catastrophe and why, for some reason, we're not doing what we need to do to ensure our species' survival. I just love the way that he ended this film because it makes us take a hard look at where we're ultimately going. In the film, a deadly comet which will end humanity as we know it is on a collision course with Earth. But the powers that be ignore scientific data in favor of big business and tech. Instead of destroying or diverting the comet to save humankind, they see the comet as a potential resource for enrichment and mine it for capital, before only half-heartedly trying to save the planet as an afterthought. It's a level of willful inaction and a focus on short-term material gain that's actually in insane, because what does it matter how rich you are if you're dead? What do these trillions of dollars even matter if, if we're all gonna die from the impact oh, about of this comet? But it's also an eerily accurate echo of how we continue to mine our world for non-renewable resources instead of investing in green energy, even though burning fossil fuels is explicitly causing our downfall. The world's gonna end and no one's taking it seriously. Everyone's talking about other that's, news stories. That's reality. That's what's actually happening. Do you want to talk about the movie? It became less and less like a, a, a satire and more and more like a documentary. In the almost mundane conversation at the Last Supper, before Dr. Mindy says his final line, which director Adam McKay said DiCaprio came up with himself, the focus isn't on the fruits of extreme wealth, but on the amazing luxury and wonder most of us take for granted every day. This coffee doesn't, doesn't taste store bought, is it? Hi. I grind my own beans, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a coffee nut. Don't Look Up is trying to remind us that we already have everything, too. We've been born on a planet that's truly paradise, full of gifts far more priceless than anything money can buy. Here's our take on Don't Look Up's deeper message about how rich we already are and whether we can snap out of our current failure to stave off total climate catastrophe. Are we not being clear? We're trying to tell you that the entire planet is about to be destroyed. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notified about all our new videos. The central evils of the film, which lead people to making these choices that harm the planet, are money and power, two forces that today intersect more than ever. The threat in Don't Look Up may be a comet, but the ultimate planet killer is tech billionaire Peter Isherwell. CEO of Bash and the third richest human ever. He's the guy that, uh, that bought the, the, the Gutenberg Bible and lost it. The already obscenely rich CEO of a fictional company called Bash pressures the U.S. government to preserve the comet's mineral rights so that his company can become richer. This comet hurtling towards us from deep space actually contains at least $32 trillion of these critical materials. The evil tech mogul figure is fast becoming a stock film and TV trope, just as popular narratives of many real-life tech CEOs have shifted fairly suddenly from hero to villain narratives. And it's true that real-life tech CEOs have weaponized the climate crisis to position themselves as potential saviors with large pledges. And since we know that uh, long-term we're going to have to have renewable energy anyway. It's really just a question of do we try to get there sooner or later? Um, you know, and, and we should try to get there sooner. Even though it's the wealthy elite and the biggest companies who contribute the most to climate change, Don't Look Up's choice to make Isherwell both the enemy and the one truly calling the shots underlines how the power of tech billionaires is out of hand. In past stories about possible apocalyptic events facing the planet, government leaders would often make the crucial decisions. But here, the people we think of as holding the most power are really just puppets in Isherwell's pocket. Madam President, may I have a word with you outside for a moment, please? Jenny, no! I'm so sorry. The film ultimately paints the portrait of a world where money is power. Money wins. And the film makes clear that when the person who holds the most power is the person who owns the most capital, this is incredibly dangerous. Isherwell is allowed to take complete control of the mission to save the Earth. And whether or not his ideas are completely terrible, which they kind of are, his interests are completely self-serving, and there's no reason to trust either his commitment or his ability to come through because he's not being held accountable in any way. Has any of this been peer-reviewed? No. 
Without having to be tested and proven in any way, Isherwell's technology fails at the crucial moment, leaving humanity, which has put all its eggs into Tech's basket, to die. I've got four misfires and the sink was off. It's a chilling warning that we are giving too much power and trust into the hands of tech behemoths without insisting on any meaningful systems of accountability or checks on that power. Even if we're not consciously or explicitly making these billionaires our leaders, it's the de facto result of letting them become so much obscenely richer than everyone else in a world where, as we saw, capital is power. When it comes to the climate crisis too, many people hope for technological solutions that will save us from disaster. But like counting on Isherwell in this story, this is a huge gamble and distraction. By not acting just like the people in Don't Look Up, we're increasingly backing ourselves into a corner where we count on an elaborate, unlikely wild card tech solution, which is probably the same as signing our own death warrants. That Isherwell's final proposal is to start a new life on a distant planet is a direct shot at the space exploration being pioneered by Musk, Bezos, and Richard Branson, ventures which come with significant carbon emissions, and which seem focused on imagining a life beyond Earth instead of properly trying to save this one. And the long-term, uh, probably a survival of humanity and life as we know it, we must become a multi-planet species. The movie even suggests it's possible Isherwell had no intention of ever stopping the comet at all. And his plan has always just been using his obscene wealth to save this small cohort of rich people who will settle on a distant planet. There's a ship. In case we were wrong. And clearly we were wrong. Of course, you've got a, a ship. This too echoes how some powerful people who aren't concerned about climate change simply believe that by enriching themselves enough, they can ensure that they and their loved ones will be protected. In the movie's epilogue though, Don't Look Up tries to get across how delusional this belief really is. Isherwell's resettlement plan ends in disaster almost as soon as they arrive. What is that thing? I believe that's called a brontorock. Whatever you do, do pet them! Underlining that as cool as it may sound, any form of outer space relocation is a huge long shot, far more elaborate, difficult, expensive, and risky than simply making it work here. Don't Look Up makes us think about what to do with the time we have on this Earth. One thing that's a priority for me is eating delicious, satisfying meals at home, and HelloFresh helps me do that. Right now, you can go to HelloFresh.com slash TheTake16 and use the code TheTake16 to get up to 16 free meals and 3 free gifts. With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. It saves me so much stress in the kitchen. The recipes are easy to follow and quick to make with steps and pictures to guide you along the way. Plus, the food is high quality. Over 90% of ingredients are sourced directly from farmers to ensure only the freshest produce and proteins are delivered right to your door. After a long day, I'm often not in the mood to figure out what to make and spend a ton of time getting a meal ready. So I love that HelloFresh takes the guesswork out of the process and makes cooking easy and fun. Go to HelloFresh.com slash TheTake16 and use the code TheTake16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. We're often told that solving the climate crisis starts from electing the right people into power, but the film suggests that it's not so simple, because here, all the people who we think of as possessing power really are cogs, trapped by the hyper-capitalist system. Meryl Streep's President Orlean is a Donald Trump cipher whose decisions are all motivated by keeping the power she's got, which is what makes her defer to donor Isherwell. Is he allowed to be in here? Yeah, he's a platinum eagle level donor to the campaign, so he has full clearance. The first person to call Dr. Mindy and Kate Dibiaski's findings into question is the head of NASA, who's really a super rich, underqualified supporter of the president and effectively used her massive wealth to buy an important job. Yeah, she's the head of NASA, but look, she's a former anesthesiologist and a president oh, lean donor. super donor. When Dr. Mindy and Kate are trying to get the word out, they go to the press. But even in the supposedly dispassionate, fact based arena of journalism, their message can't cut through the guiding principle of entertainment, seeking views for profit. Okay, well, as it's damaging, will it hit this one house in particular that's right on the coast of New Jersey? It's my ex-wife's house. I needed to be hit. That's something we do around here. You know, we just keep the bad news light. When their grim assertions clash with the lighthearted tone of the morning show they're invited on, Kate's turned into a meme, and their news is overshadowed by celebrity gossip. A more serious article written for the New York Herald is buried by the editors when it's clear that nobody is reading it. We did not feature or push on any sites, and clicks overall were below basic weather and 
traffic stories. This whole media structure and everyone in this society is allowing themselves to be controlled by this wheel, pursuing money without questioning if this larger system is truly working. When anyone tries to speak truth that challenges this system, they're either targeted for seduction by power and capital like Dr. Mindy or discarded and mocked like Kate. Dr. Mindy can be absorbed into this system as a Dr. Fauci-like figure who somewhat moderately tries to spread nuggets of truth, but in gentle enough terms that he makes people feel comfortable. Sure, the jobs the comet's gonna create sound great. What if it's not safe? Right now, millions of you are having these same doubts and questions. DiCaprio likens his character to climate scientists trying to play within the system. Meanwhile, Jennifer Lawrence is Kate, the grad student who discovers the comet and won't be dissuaded from actually telling the uncomfortable truth, becomes a kind of Greta Thunberg type underground hero to young people. Holy shit, you're a stone cold legend. I got a picture of you on my board. A picture on his fucking board. But where Thunberg has become an important voice in the climate crisis, the mainstream just treats Kate as a figure of ridicule. We're all gonna die. Fuck off, please. Framing her as the hysterical woman in contrast to Mindy's assumed likability due to his simply being a semi-attractive, polite white guy. Ultimately, Don't Look Up captures that this entire machine governing our society, from the chat show hosts beholden to views, to the politicians beholden to midterms, to the tech billionaires and all the rest of us beholden to capital, is operating on autopilot. It feels like no one can really stop it, but if we don't, it's going to kill us. In addition to showing how powerful people are failing our planet, the film also shows how many ordinary people would rather bury their heads in the sand than confront a painful reality. Your dad and I are for the jobs the comet will provide. The plot around the comet demonstrates how in our contentious world, facts that are simply accurate inevitably become politicized and manipulated. The obfuscation is an intentional way to control the population. And do you know why they want you to look up? Because they want you to be afraid. The film's title is revealed to be a campaign campaign slogan for President Orlean as she tries to convince people that everything is under control, a counter-message to the viral Just Look Up movement inspired by Dr. Mindy's and Kate's attempts to get the basic truth out. Look up into the sky! It's, it's a f***ing fact. We have proof. Just look up! Guys, please just look up. But by choosing Don't Look Up as its title, the film underlines how many of us on some level partake in the dangerous popular mentality of ignoring the urgent existential problem in front of us, because surely someone else with more power will fix it. As we've seen, though, that someone else can't be trusted to do so, and the polarization of popular opinion in itself is a useful distraction for capital-seeking forces. For decades, climate change deniers and propaganda funded by the fossil fuel industries have crippled efforts to stop global warming by stalling the conversation on establishing that climate change is even happening. We're hearing that there is no comet. Some or that there is a comet, right. but it's a good thing, or maybe it's a bad thing. We are so confused. Likewise, the film contains striking parallels with how the role of science has been dangerously politicized during the global COVID-19 pandemic, thus hampering public health efforts to vaccinate and protect the public. While Don't Look Up is intended as a climate analogy, in some ways a deadly unexpected comet in the sky aligns more with the pandemic. And even though many have called the pandemic a hoax, it's harder to continue to deny when naysayers eventually find themselves or loved ones landed in the hospital. After Don't Look Up's production was halted because of COVID, director Adam McKay said that how people reacted to the pandemic meant the script had to become 20% crazier because reality had played out crazier. The film has achieved particular notoriety in Brazil, where President Bolsonaro quickly downplayed the severity of the pandemic, and scientist Natalia Pasternak, when explaining the crisis on national TV, found herself playing a role much like Kate DiBiaschi's. No tem humor. Não tem leveza. Se ele tomar vergonha nessa cara que ele vai matar alguém. The plot captures how when this atmosphere of division is created, we become entrenched in our own viewpoints, trying to just be right instead of truly convincing the other side or making any larger progress. While President Orlean is holding Trump-style Don't Look Up rallies extolling the virtues of ignorance and ignoring the facts, the Just Look Up movement is doing something almost as unhelpful by hosting a glitzy pop concert at London's Wembley Stadium, distilling their message into an Ariana Grande as Riley Bina pop song, which 
really doesn't say much at all. The film cuts between these two events, the similarities becoming clearer. Each is playing to their base and turning this serious situation into a culture war. The end result is that people may feel defending their side is enough and switch off from what's really required for the larger effort. I think we're all tired of the politics. The liberals attending the Riley Bina event may feel they're on the right side and at least acknowledge the truth, but they're not making any substantive change to their capital-driven, comfortable status quo, so none of this is really going to stop the comet or climate change. And despite President Orlean's Trumpian nature, she's also the first woman president, with pictures and portraits of a mix of conservative and liberal icons in her office. So this deliberate vagueness sends the message that the liberal establishment may not be as meaningfully far apart from the conservative establishment as we think. Meanwhile, the story reflects the risks of the apathy and nihilistic despair that's plaguing younger generations, as represented by Timothy Chalamet's character and his group of friends that Kate falls in with. This slacker hipster group has its own form of conspiracy theory mindset, which exaggerates the devious intelligence of people in power. That got Orlean to pay the Chilean government, if I'm correct, $90 billion. Mm -hmm to let the tsunamis hit up the coast of the country. Does that sound right to you? You guys, the truth is way more depressing. They're not even smart enough to be as evil as you're giving them credit for. But most worryingly, they're processing these events with ironic detachment and cynical hopelessness because they believe they've been born into a losing battle. You don't give a shit, do you? We don't give a shit either. Perhaps most chilling is watching Kate, as someone who 100% knows what's happening but is powerless to stop it, contend with what it is to live our final moments totally without hope. And this raises a truly tragic worst case scenario we have to consider. What if we really don't solve this problem and are left to simply decide what to do with the relatively short time that's left to us? Okay, we're all gonna die. The fact that our missions are still going up worldwide and we're not making the changes necessary. Climate scientist Peter Kalmus wrote in The Guardian that Don't Look Up is the most accurate film about society's terrifying non-response to climate breakdown I've seen. DiCaprio, who's long been an environmental activist, has said his passion for the cause motivated him to make this movie. As DiCaprio points out, and Don't Look Up contends with, it's surprisingly difficult to make media about climate change today that people will pay attention to. Much like the inundation of news on climate change, a lot of people don't want to hear it. This isn't just due to people who are in denial. Many of those who do take climate change seriously are feeling so overwhelmed and hopeless that they have the instinct to shut off from the onslaught of bad news. Don't Look Up thus attempts to reach us through comedy, featuring the enjoyment and escapism of likable movie stars. It employs an analogy which may give us another level on which to engage intellectually with the problem. Plus, it includes a level of urgent apocalyptic warning to shock us into facing just how dire this situation is. You should stay up Jeez. all night, every night, crying. When we're all 100% for sure gonna f die! It's an approach that's worked, at least to reach audiences. Netflix reported that the film broke its record for most hours watched in a single week. Whether you think it succeeded artistically or didn't nail its execution, Don't Look Up has engendered significant discourse since its release. Even some of its detractors have said it's important to watch. Still, some have critiqued whether Don't Look Up is guilty of doing one of the things it criticizes, packaging up a serious issue for entertainment purposes. I mean, that's why we made Total Devastation. It's for everyone, you know, it's a popcorn movie. At a point when, as the film itself tells us, awareness and conversation just aren't enough. Does it simply preach to the converted? And haven't we been here quite a few times before? Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth came out in 2006, winning the Academy Award for Best Documentary, breaking box office records, and pushing climate change into the popular discourse. Each one of us is a cause of global warming, but each of us can make choices to change that. But 15 years down the line, and we are where we are. Critics have also noted that not every aspect of the analogy quite works. While the film spotlights how big tech has exploited the climate crisis, the central analogy of a random comet erases how big industry is also guilty for creating the climate change problem in the first place. And since about 85% of the carbon dioxide we currently emit comes from fossil fuels and industry, we need to stop fossil fuels 
from causing further global warming. The way the film lumps in both political sides as part of the problem also risks suggesting it really doesn't matter that Trump-like forces engage in total obfuscation of the truth, ethics, or democratic values. Perhaps the most striking difference between climate change and the comet analogy is that Don't Look Up's simple, fast-moving, and visible threat would be in some ways easier to fight within the constraints of our economic socio-political machine. As Kalmus writes, climate scientists have faced an even more insurmountable public communication task than the astronomers in Don't Look Up since climate destruction unfolds over decades, lightning fast as far as the planet is concerned, but glacially slow as far as the news cycle is concerned, and isn't as immediate and visible as a comet in the sky. This film about why we should listen to scientists actually centers its final moments on religion. We ask for your grace tonight, despite our pride. Science and religion are often framed as opposing in today's discourse, but are they? True religiosity is grounded in humility and gratitude for the enormous gifts that this life grants us. And true respect for science is about doing that creation the honor of respecting the truth, making the hard, rational choices that are required of us to preserve what matters most. In Don't Look Up's quiet yet climactic Last Supper scene, we get a glimpse of how both are crucial to at last pull together in saving our people. Sometimes we need to just be able to say things to one another. We need to hear things. This is the take on your favorite movie shows and pop culture. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.